Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video I'm taking you way back to 2010. In this video I'm going to provide some onboard commentary for my first ever car racing win. My name is David Pittard, I'm a Nervo Green Champion, international racing driver and driver coach. This video is the second video at looking back at my career at, in becoming an international racing driver. So make sure you subscribe for more videos to come like this. In this video, we're going to look at my first ever race win in my first year of car racing. We're going to look at the background going into the final race of the year of the season so far, and then I'm going to provide some commentary on how I managed to take the win and what I think helped me gain my first win in my first year of racing. Starting at my first ever race at Snetterton in May 2010. Here I just managed to obtain my license signatures that I needed to start upgrading my license and finish just inside the top 10 in the three races that were held over the weekend. Moving on to the next race at Lydon Hill, I managed to show some more progress after a bit of testing and getting used to the car a bit more to qualify on the second row and even managed to nail my launch and take the lead into the first corner at my second race. I did learn a lot from series uh, man to beat, Alex Gassman, who actually runs Camber and Combustion YouTube channel, so make sure you check his channel out, uh, and got schooled into the hairpin at Lydon Hill and lost the race lead. I was really gutted to say the least. Next race at Mallory Park, I qualified on pole, which was really good. Finished second in the second race, which again, I was really annoyed with. I then set the lap record at Mallory Park in the second race, and then immediately after setting the lap record, I proceeded to have a rotation. This left one race at the end of the year to try and secure my race win in my first racing year. And this is what I really, really wanted. I really wanted to do it as brands as well. It's a place where I grew up watching car racing and it definitely holds a really special place in my heart. So to try and get my first race win here would have been an absolute dream. It's damp here in the Brands Hatch Indy circuit and you, I managed to get a good launch off of third place on the grid. Uh, you don't want to be on the front row of the grid in damp Brands Hatch as it's uphill as proven by the front row getting swamped by myself and the number 22 orange car um, who took the lead. As you can see through the first lap here, just talking you through it, it's damp so we're just trying to feel out the conditions. You'll notice in my driving that I'm not trying to combine brake and not trying to combine accelerate too much at all because this is where you're going to have a moment and overload the tyre and, and have a spin. We're already starting to gap the cars behind so I can relax and just focus on trying to learn from what the car ahead is doing and trying to obviously improve that. Being not first on the road is always a benefit as you can see what they're doing, the car ahead and uh, gauge how you can make time on them. However, you can see it really is 50-50 between wet and dry on the Brands Hatch Indy circuit. I think it's September now at this point, so yeah, it's pretty pretty greasy and late in the late in the year. So I'm just going to fast forward now. Initially, the number 22 car starts to pull away from me. We, we're holding each other's ground for now, but I start to notice that he's quicker through the second half of the lap, so through Surtees and Clearways, uh, the final two corners, whereas I'm quicker through Paddock here and Druid's hairpin here. However, eventually the 22 car starts to stretch its lead a little bit, so I'm not making as much time here and you can see that the 22 car is becoming more and more of a speck in the distance. I remember at this point thinking to myself, right, I've really got to push myself out of my comfort zone now to try and close the gap and take more risks on the slippier part of the circuit. And in, in turn, after getting confident in that, I start to gain a bit of time on the 22 car back again. At this point here, I'm pretty pumped because I can see that the gap is coming down. I'm really trying to push the limit of traction of every, everywhere and close that gap down. And there, just give myself a little bit of encouragement that I am a man on a mission right now. So again, just takes another couple of laps just to keep clawing up, but now he's firmly in my sights.
Again, all this time I'm sizing him up, trying to work out where I'm faster, where he's faster, etc. And you can really see through those first two corners, I'm much, much faster than him. But again, he's quicker through these final two corners. It really was cat and mouse, which was a really fun race. It was neither of us could afford to make a mistake. And this is the point where I really start to apply the pressure. So as I'm quicker through turn one, I have a massive run on 22 car ahead just showing my nose obviously not really going to do anything from that far back but it just puts me in his mirrors and makes his t makes him take his eye off the ball now we've started to get him to defend this is where we can really start to make a maneuver on him now I tried to get the cut back but really didn't carry enough momentum to carry onto the cooper straight and try and get through into certes not much of a breaking zone here just clipping the curb to try and use the curb for a bit of rotation, but it does spin the inside wheel up and cause a bit of a slide, so not so not so beneficial there. Trying to keep my wheels on the drier parts of the circuit here and trying to get the best run out of clearways and onto the start finish straight. It's a pretty level playing field down the straight here, but I'm relatively close. Again, I can start to show my nose, but unless I really send it, I'm not really gonna be close enough. I'm still trying to size out him and his breaking points, etc. I show my nose and actually come on the inside, which isn't the preferred line, but because I'm quicker through turn one, I really gain on the way into Druids and then I'm able to get him to really defend on the way into Druids. Again, I tr he hangs me out to dry, nice and wide, doesn't turn in till late, which gives me a very wide line. And as a result, I can't really do anything on the way out of Druids. He defends the inside line through Graham Hill as well. So again, just trying to get the run on him into Surtees, not quite enough. Moving around in the mirrors a lot. Again, just trying to make sure he keeps one eye on the mirrors and not where he's going forward. And then trying to open up the final corner as it's the most important corner onto the longest straight here. Was very keen on getting on the gas there, caused a little bit of slide and just lost a little bit of traction there. However, I'm gonna to go to the outside here because he's always expecting me to do that, but then I'm gonna to dart to the inside and then get all my turning done before I get to the braking zone and brake hard in a straight line to then gain the inside line to take the lead. Now it's my chance to defend where I just sit in the middle of the road. I know he's not close enough to make a move, but I'm not gonna leave the door completely open. You can just about see in the rear view mirror that orange car moving around there, so it's, it's quite interesting to see from this point of view. However, what is frustrating is I've just taken the lead and then we're already starting to catch the, the lap traffic. So now I've got to keep the previous race leader behind as well as navigating all through the Fairly simple and easy process as everyone is pretty tentative in these conditions and also uh, it allows me to get through. Into Surtees, he just shows his nose here and maybe I give him a bit too much room there and then it's very damp on the inside and I thought I defended enough but he already made the move up the inside so fair play for taking that risk on the damp circuit on the inside. I thought I had it covered but he made the move stick. So now it's my chance to follow him through the traffic. When following through traffic, it's very important that you always follow the car ahead through. If you get stuck behind and the, car, the lapped car, uh, even for one corner, that can just completely break the toe, break your rhythm, break your spirit, and you end up uh, dropping a lot of time. Especially here, I thought oh, I'm going to get caught behind two cars, but luckily they were both very um, aware and were able to let us both through. At this point here, I'm still hassling, still hounding him, trying to... Uh, see where I'm quicker and he's not. Uh, we've cleared the majority of the traffic now, which is good. I and mean, it can just be a straight up battle between us two. So having gained the lead, fought through traffic and then lost the lead again, and then got through the remainder of the traffic, I got a mega run out of the final corner here. I actually lost how lost track of how long the race had actually been. I looked at the pit board and saw that this was going to be the last lap. I already had a good run. Same thing, look to the outside, get the car straight before the braking zone and then nail the brakes on the way into turn one. Managed to get alongside, get the apex and into the lead. I then covered the inside but he didn't have a run on me. Uh, I knew he went to the outside for Druids. I missed my turning point and just hung him out nice and wide and then he tucked back in beside me, behind me, sorry. However, he then touched the exit curve and then spun across the circuit and uh, I think he did a 180 and then carried on. 
uh, after turning round, but that gave me like a 20 or 30 second uh, gap to the rest of the field basically. So I had the opportunity to just stroke it home, which was really cool. So just nailing my marks, no pressure from behind whatsoever and nailing the last apex. And yeah, then it was basically job done. Uh, I didn't even had the opportunity to wind the window down put my lights on and celebrate as I'd always dreamed of celebrating for my first race win. As you can hear from that, I'm pretty happy. It was uh, something I worked towards, but there are a few things that I think helped me win my first race in my first season. Number one is the fact that I'd been racing already for eight years in karting, so I understood how racing lines worked and overtaking and racecraft, etc. Uh, these are all the fundamental building blocks for racing in general. I mean, the racecraft you learn in karting is something you can take all the way through your racing career and it was definitely a great place to to start and learn and then secondly is I'd done a bit of a drift day as well so that allowed me to increase my car control and that's something which allowed me to understand what beyond the limit of grip was and beyond what a car can do I did it in a very controlled environment as you can see here just in a little uh, skid pan area uh, this was in 2008 as well but um, yeah, I can't recommend this enough. If you want to drive faster on circuit, go on a drift course, go on a skid course so that you can understand what happens beyond the limit. So you're never intimidated or afraid of the limit whatsoever. You know what's going to happen beyond it and you know how to control it. Even if you don't know it fully, as long as you start to understand it, you can always build on it. So I can't recommend doing drift days and, and stuff before to improve your track day driving. So yeah, there's a quick overview on my first race win. Uh, please let me know if you want me to maybe slow the video down, talk uh, more about the specifics of the race rather than overviewing the whole race uh, entirely. So yeah, let me know in the comments if that's what you want to see or if, you're, if, if that was a good insight into uh, driving. Please check out the videos on the screen now. They show the previous video of how I became an international racing driver. Uh, my onboard classic and also make sure you stay subscribed for plenty more videos like this to come. Until next time, bis dann.